welcome back. I was just getting the snow blower going there for the day. As you can see here, I'm inside the tractor cab. This is one of the nicer spots to be when you're clearing snow. I know it's not a necessity. Neither's coffee or sludge as I call it, but it's, sure, it's certainly nice to have. I'm just making my way out to the uh, sawmill here. I like to keep a laneway open throughout the winter. We get so much snow here in central Ontario, Canada, that if I don't keep a laneway open, I don't get out there until spring. Uh, this snow, it just accumulates and accumulates, and well, if you've been around the channel for a while, you know right well that we can get, we can get well over a foot in a 24-hour period. And in some crazy situations, we can get like four feet. Tune back uh, about a month or two to see that. Anyways, what I'm going to talk to you guys about today is my snow removal setup. If you own a tractor like I do, one of the things you may do with it is clear snow. Now I have a rear facing snow blower. Many of you are after me about getting rid of it and getting a uh, front facing snow blower. Today I'm going to tell you why I do not have that. And one thing you may notice here is that despite the fact that I have a rear facing snow blower on, you don't always have to face backwards. That of course, unless you're getting close to some firewood. See the mist of snow hitting the window? That would normally be hitting me in the face if I had an open station machine. Alright, as I was saying, when you've got the big mirrors on the tractor, in fact, I've got three mirrors on this thing. I've got a reverse mirror, two side mirrors, and I've actually got a reverse camera. Some of you have asked me about that. This right here, that's a reverse camera. And in just a minute, I'll show you on my dash here. I've got a, I've got a video screen. And so with those things, I don't have to turn around that much. As you can tell right now, it's pretty comfortable. Once you get a dedicated spot plowed or uh, snow blowed for the first time, it's more or less just a matter of staying within the two banks and you know what's there. So anyways, we're going to make our way through here. I don't know if you guys can see down there. We have an awful lot of coyotes here this year. See the coyote tracks down there? Quite a few, quite a few of them these days. Anyways, the other nice thing you'll notice with my snowblower attachment is I have rear remotes on this tractor, which basically means there's two hydraulic connections. Down here by my right leg, I've got the joystick for the front loader, but I've also got the joystick for the rear remotes. That joystick allows me to move the chute without having to get out of the tractor, so that's kind of nice. Anyways, let's continue on. You guys can see what I see, and uh, we'll go from there. Welcome back.
can be a bit slippery and so the tire chains really help here but I just slid a little bit too far to the right so I gotta straighten her out the trouble is my front tires don't have chains on them and this is a bit of a side hill you probably can't tell in the video but because of that I lose the front end a little bit sliding and then the back wants to uh, wants to follow suit anyways there we go we got to straighten out There we have it, just a little bit of a trail cleared out just past my sawmill. I'm very accustomed to that because I'm doing that trek out there very often here in central Ontario, Canada. It tends to snow almost every other day some years. Despite the fact that it looks like that's one of those years, this year is actually quite low for snow. Despite that, I've been out there an awful lot on the tractor, probably racking up the miles because I don't have a uh, odometer on this. I have no, no idea how many, how many miles I've put, but I'm sure it's a lot. This is my general setup for snow removal. This could be improved, I'm sure, but because I'm using this not only for snow removal, but forestry work and landscaping work and all kinds of other work, I have to make do. I have a rear facing snow blower here. In a perfect world, I probably would have a snow blower up there on the front of the tractor. That way I never have to do those neck exercises that you guys see me doing despite the fact that I don't mind because I'm not doing it all that often with all my mirrors and the rear facing camera. In a perfect world, I wouldn't do it at all. I'd have this up there, I'd be facing forward and that'd be it. But this right here works well. It can be easily removed. I want it to be easily removed because I'm constantly going back and forth between different pieces of equipment on the back of the tractor. 
I often have the skidding winch on here more often than not. I also periodically will throw the chipper on there to chip up my slab wood. And uh, obviously when we're clearing snow, I have this on here. So I got to have something that will easily come off my tractor. And I don't want to spend all day getting it off and putting something else on. This is the ticket for that. Now this is also, despite it being very well built and robust, it's also very, it's priced very well. It's, uh, it's reasonable. And so if you're getting a snowblower for a tractor, rear facing typically is the lower cost options. Front mounted tends to be more money. You can get rear facing, or let me correct myself. You can get rear mounted front facing snowblowers. How that works is basically you drive forward. The auger, instead of getting fed by driving backwards, it gets fed by driving forward. So basically you got to drive over the snowpack before it clears it. I don't like that particularly well, just because we get so much snow, I don't want to have to drive through it before I can clear it. Cause sometimes we get a ton of snow overnight and I can't even drive my tractor through it. And uh, so I definitely want to have something like this so I can drive after the snow has been cleared. And another reason this rear facing snowblower works for me is it allows me to leave my loader intact throughout the year. And that's a necessity. Right now I've got a bucket on. I'll use the bucket to break down snow banks. I might uh, carry firewood. I might carry equipment out to uh, the sawmill. Who knows what I'm using it for, but I want it on there for those purposes. I also might have the forks on there at any given time to lift firewood uh, up. I might also have my, uh, my, my grapple on there to move logs. I need those things regularly and so I don't want to have to go back and forth between a front mounted snowblower and these things because that process of back and forth would wear me out and I don't want to go down that road. And if we make our way to the mid part of the tractor, I also don't have a mid PTO. Many tractors which will run a front mounted snowblower, they have a mid PTO and so that mid PTO puts the power up to the snowblower at the front. I don't have that, I only have a PTO at the back. Now that doesn't mean I can't use the power at the back to power the snowblower at the front. But what I'd end up having is, I'd end up having a really long PTO shaft that runs all the way under the tractor, all the way to the front. You can uh, Google some images to see what those look like, but that would be an alternative. I don't know the cost of it, but I'm pretty certain it's gonna be more expensive than this basic setup right here. One thing I like about this setup as well, that bucket, it is really helpful at breaking up frozen snow drifts. Uh, my blower, obviously I can drive into a pile like this and I can back up as far as I can. But when this pile gets super, super big, it becomes very difficult for me to move that snow with the snow blower, especially when it's super high. And so the bucket on my tractor allows me to break this bank up, push it back, and then I can continue on. The snow blower is great, but it's certainly not there to uh, push snow as much as it is to throw it. And what would a discussion about tractors and snow removal be without talking about a tractor cab? The question becomes, do you get a cab with your tractor? Well, many people will say, I'm not getting a cab. It's way too much money. I'm going to be working in the woods and I'm going to break the glass. Well, I work in the woods too. And I can tell you, even if I didn't have the cab, I don't want branches hitting me in the face. And so I'm going to be careful whether I have a cab or whether I have an open station because I don't want sticks and branches and everything else getting close to me. If you're going to clear snow, my opinion, price out what a cab costs, price out what your comfort's worth. And if you can afford it, I would always say go for it. Obviously, if it's going to be the difference between getting a tractor and not, I would always go for not getting a, getting a cab just to have a tractor. But if you can splurge for it, I definitely like it. Um, many of those times you saw the snow hitting the camera. Well, that would have been hitting me in the face if I didn't have that tractor cab. Not to mention, I don't often wear a coat in there. I'm sitting in there listening to the radio, drinking sludge, and well, it's kind of comfortable. Even in the middle of the night, you know, I turn the big floodlights on, I get in there, listen to a nice tune, and have the sludge, and think about all of life's problems, and they just sort of go away as I watch the snow melt on the window. So that's my two cents. I really like the cabs. If you can get it, great. If you can't, well, just do what you can. That's it for me today. Hopefully you guys like my snow setup. It certainly uh, served me well for a number of years. I hope to continue using it. And well, I think I'm on to about the, oh, probably the 20th shear pin this year. Fingers crossed, I am gonna end on that. And uh, yeah, that's it. Guys, take care, be well. See you next time.